All right, so we're looking at conservation of energy now. Um, and if you remember, uh, with conservation of energy, we were concerned with, our, well, with Reynolds transport theorem, we're concerned with what our, um, our lowercase b is, our, our, our blank per unit mass. In this case, our lowercase b is going to be, well, what we call lowercase e, which is our energy per unit mass. It's a internal energy. You, I call it an angry you, but it's, um, it is a internal energy per unit mass. We have one half v squared, which is our kinetic energy per unit mass. And we have a gz, which is our um, potential energy per unit mass. So if we do conservation of energy on a system, we, we realize that our system has to have some, uh, any change in energy is going to be of our system itself has to be a result of uh, heat flow in. So Q dot net in plus any work in W dot and net in. So any net heat flux in or work in, and that's just telling to tell you that um, these are positive if they're coming in, uh, is going to be equal to uh, our old friend d dt integral over control volume of rho times our little b, which is a angry u plus one half v squared plus gz dv. So that quantity integrated over our control volume plus integral over control surface of rho angry u plus one half v squared plus gz um, times w dot n hat dA. Now, um, one of the important things to remember here is that this velocity is not a vector anymore. This is the magnitude, magnitude, magnitude um, of velocity, i.e. the speed. because that's what matters for kinetic energy, right? We're cared about how much kinetic energy crosses the boundaries of our flow. So it's just the magnitude of the velocity at that point. We don't have to worry about which direction it is. It's just the magnitude of the velocity. Okay, so this is a lot. Um, and we can um, actually make this a little bit more useful by breaking up our um, work in into two parts, right? Um, so we're going to uh, we're going to say that our um, work is equal to any like shaft work in addition to flow work. All right. So flow work is the work that pressure does when fluid flows across a surface. So a um, differential amount of what we call um, W dot P, which is the pressure work, if you will, is equal to um, negative p times the differential area because we're integrating over an area times n hat dotted into our velocity at the surface um, so this is our velocity at surface um, so this by the way is e basically equal to our w dot n hat that we're used to i'm just using um, talking about the way the book does it so this is the pressure at the surface. And again, this is our differential area. So we can integrate this and add to work side, work side, because um, we want to add up all, all, all across our surface of our integral, we want to add up all of the work that the pressure is doing. So then our equation becomes um, Q dot net in plus W dot net in. Remember W dot net in now is just our shaft work minus the integral of our pressure times W dot n hat dA, which is equal to D dt integral of rho times, I'm just gonna write little e for now because it's getting a little tedious dv 
plus integral over control surface. Remember, this other one is a control volume integral. This is a control surface integral of rho e w hat dot n hat dA. And so the nice part is, is that you clearly see we're integrating over our areas. These two integrals look very similar. similar. So we're going to combine them. And we get q dot net n plus w dot net n is equal to d dt, and I'm going to write out the whole thing now because this is the last time we're going to write it, of our control volume of rho angry u, whoops, that's our internal energy per unit mass, plus v squared over 2 plus gz dv plus integral over control surface of rho um, angry u plus now we have to make our pressure per unit mass, so we're going to divide by our rho, because remember, um, uh, this you'll see you'll recognize this next part, v squared over two plus g z. That looks like our Bernoulli's equation, right? These are this is our energy per unit mass uh, from our Bernoulli's equation, right there. These last three terms I just wrote, and we multiply that by w dot n hat. DA. Remember this W dot n hat DA is our flow rate across our control volume surface. So what this is saying is how much energy, either internal energy, pressure energy, uh, kinetic energy, or potential energy is carried across our control volume surface by our flow rate, which is W dot n hat DA. So this is a rough equation. Um, by the way, that's I'm going to star that because that's a that's a one of our final forms. This is a rough equation, but there are several simpler versions that we will use more often. The reason why it's rough is we have to be able to define our pressure, define our velocity, define our height across our surfaces, which is all, and within our control volume, which is a lot, right? Um, it's a lot to keep track of. It's not necessarily difficult. You could do it, but it's a lot to keep track of. So what if we have what we call uniform properties in steady state? So if we have um, steady state, obviously the, this first integral goes away, right? The, the uh, d dt of our control volume of our energy goes away. And if we have uniform properties, what uniform properties means is the same thing as uniform flow. We can take our um, internal energy, pressure, velocity, and height and move it outside of our, our integral. And so our uh, equation becomes q dot net well, I'm just going to do this really quick just to simplify it. W dot net in is equal to u hat plus p over rho plus v squared over 2 plus gz um, times our integral of rho w dot n hat dA. But as we talked about, this is just... Um, this part here is just our flow rate, w dot n hat dA, times our density. So we can um, rewrite this whole thing if we want as q dot rho, which is equal to m dot. So with that simplification, um, uh, so obviously, by the way, uniform properties implies that our density is also uniform across our flow, right? Uh, so our be, if our internal energy, pressure, velocity, height, and density are all uniform across our control volume surface, then we can rewrite this as the following equation, which is super useful. Q dot net plus W dot net in is equal to the sum out, uh, sum of all of our flows that are leaving our control volume of M dot times U hat plus pressure divided by rho, which is our enthalpy, plus v squared over 2 plus gz, minus the sum of all of our flows coming in of m dot times u hat plus p over rho plus v squared over 2 plus gz. So, um, right, so what this is basically telling us is that if we have uh, any net heat in or out plus net work in or out is going to be equal to um, 
the sum of all of our flows in of the mass flow rate times the internal energy plus the pressure energy plus the velocity energy plus the, the potential energy minus m dot times all those things again. So if we have work out, for example, that must mean that our, um, our uh, energy out is less than our energy in, which means we get a negative number on the right-hand side, which means our W dot is negative on the left-hand side, which means it's out, right? So this is really useful for compressible flow problems because it does not assume, one, you could use a different density at each of your entrances and exits which happens a lot, right? You might have at the beginning of your control volume a certain density of a shock or some kind of um, pressure change, and then on the exit you have a different density leaving. So this becomes very useful for compressible flow. Um, So uh, yeah, you guys will get more of that in your, uh, actually, I actually think it's called compressible flow class if you're a, an aerospace major. Um, note, this looks like Bernoulli's. Um, well, let's, let's do a little, let's do red here. Note, note this looks like Bernoulli's. Um, but it's applied at the surface. Of our CV. Um, and uh, you must be able to calculate um, M dot. M dot, which you can't if you're just along a streamline, right? Um, another thing to note is that um, this does not have, like Bernoulli's has the assumption of inviscid flow. There are no viscous losses in Bernoulli's. In this equation, though, we can have viscous losses, and where that shows up is our enthalpy changes, right? So our, if we have, let's say we have um, an adiabatic flow with no work, so no heat transfer, no work, so the left-hand side of this equation is equal to zero, um, zero in what we can have now is because we have this internal energy component, we can have some of our uh, potential or um, some of our pressure in or our velocity in or our potential energy in can be converted into internal energy as it leaves, which means it's this useful energy of pressure, velocity, or height is being converted into thermal energy, which is not as useful, right? That's what viscous losses are. It's a conversion of um, usable energy into heat energy. Um, we can simplify this a little bit farther. Um, if we have only one entrance and one exit, uh, uh, and m dot then are all the same, so we have the same m dot and same uh, same m dot, and we have one entrance and one exit. Which, because obviously we have steady state, this has to be true. Um, we can divide everything by m dot, so we can say. Uh, oh, let me write this in blue, actually. So we can say Q dot um, net plus uh, W dot net over M dot over M dot. And we're going to write that as actually a little Q dot net plus a little W net is equal to U hat plus P over rho plus V squared over 2 plus GZ out minus u hat plus p over rho plus v squared over 2 plus gz in. Great. So um, if we rearrange this a little bit to put um, the everything that's coming into our control volume on the right and everything that's leaving our control volume on the left, um, and putting all of our temperature stuff together. So let me show you what this looks like. We're going to put all of the leaving stuff on the left. So P divided by rho plus V squared over 2 plus GZ out is equal to P over rho plus V squared over 2 plus GZ in. Now you're wondering what happened to our internal energy. Well, we're going to combine all that stuff. Well, first of all, let's write our W dot in, little w 
remember this is per per m dot so it's a little w n um, plus now all of our thermal energy stuff so we have u hat u angry in minus u angry out plus q dot n right and um, if if we are not purposefully adding or subtracting um, heat, this is our losses, which makes sense, right? What, uh, what I told you was if we have some energy coming in plus whatever work we have, and remember the work can be negative, so it could be taking work out of our system, which would be a, um, like a turbine. Um, this would be then, uh, if that's not equal to the work that's coming out of our, our energy that's coming out of our system, it's because some of that energy went into our losses, which end up changing the temperature of our fluid, right? Um, and sometimes the temperature doesn't change because the heat just um, conducts or convex out of our system and we lose it, which is why this Q is in here as well. So ultimately, work is usable energy this is usable energy, this is usable energy, and this is unusable energy, at least not, not easily usable energy. And so the way we would rewrite this, and this is the form we're, gonna, form we're gonna concentrate most on in this class, is pressure divided by rho plus V squared over two plus, oops, GZ out is equal to P divided by rho plus V squared over two plus GZ in plus some W dot lowercase w dot in, because this is per per unit m, uh, per m dot, so per mass rate, um, plus losses. Um, now, it's important to note that this is not Bernoulli's. We never assumed, never assumed inviscid flow. So I can, I can ask you, for example, in a problem, given all these properties, what are the viscous losses? And you could tell them to me because you would be able to solve for this term right here. Now we did assume um, steady state, uniform properties, uh, density is equal to a constant, and we ignored heat transfer. If you have explicit heat transfer or, um, oh, and one entrance, one exit. Um, if, if any of these is not true, um, you have to go up to, for example, if we have more than one entrance or exit, we have to go back up to this quantity right here. Um, sorry. Uh, yeah, this quantity, this equation right here. Um, and if we can't have uniform properties, we have to go up to the integral, right? So as, as you lose assumptions, you have to um, move back to more complicated equations. And I'll let you know that we will um, learn some models for estimating losses in Chapter 8. Okay, and then next we'll move on to practicing this.